All right, I got a bass. Not a bad one. Hey everyone, welcome to a new lure painting tutorial. Today I'm going over a green shad pattern that I've come up with. And I've already started the lure. Uh, it's been foiled. So we're going to be starting with the opaque white. And we're going to be covering the foil at the top and at the bottom with this opaque white, uh, just kind of as a cover for the foil. Now, I'm going to cover foiling in a different video. Um, it'll be the same lure, uh, but you will see it coming. I just have to put the video together. I'm going to dry the layers in between. Um, this keeps it from running. Uh, if you need to get a thicker coat, just uh, take something like a hair dryer or a heat gun and uh, get it, put some heat on it and it will dry that layer and you'll have a little bit of prevention from running. Um, it is just good practice. So once we have the white done, we're going to switch to a pearlized copper. This is actually pearl copper from Createx. It actually looks like gold to me, but we're also going to reduce it. And uh, it's about, I, I mix it at kind of a two or a one to one ratio of reducer and paint. Um, this, this is because the, uh, the pearlized color uh, tend to come out pretty thick. Um, and I kind of wanted a little bit more trans, translucent. Um, so when you reduce it, you can help reduce the pigment in it and that makes it more translucent. With the gold, we're actually going to coat the top and just down a little bit on the sides, kind of in that white area. Now we're going to switch over to a pearl blue um, and I'm just going to put a few areas of pearl blue on it. As you can see, you can see where I put them uh, at the front and the back and this kind of just helps bring out a blue section of the shaft. We will actually do that to both sides, I don't show it, but uh, and once we get that done, we're going to go to a pearl white, and <clears throat> this is just so I have a pearlescent uh, bottom on my shad. Uh, most shad have that kind of shiny pearl bottom, so it just makes it look a little better. Once you have the pearlescent done, we'll switch to a fluorescent orange, and that whole belly is going to get a fluorescent orange, and uh, I'm actually taking off the tip here so that you can uh, get a tighter pattern. Um, it still gets too wide on me. This is a new airbrush. Eh, I would have liked it a little smaller, but uh, I am not used to this airbrush yet. This is a Iowata Neo, and I uh, haven't gotten used to quite used to it yet. So it's quite a bit different than my cheap Amazon one, but uh, quite a bit better. But at the same time, I still have a little issues with it and still need to get used to the quirks. So. And we're going to do lots of layers of this translucent or of this neon orange. Um, I, I want it to be very bright and vibrant. Uh, it attracts the fish. Um, uh, this is just a uh, the bright orange pattern is one of my favorites. Uh, when I was growing up, I had lots of luck with a uh, a black top, and silver sided, and orange belly lure, and uh, that's kind of what I'm mimicking with this lure today. And it's been a long time favorite, so I, I just enjoy the orange belly. Um, you can actually make it smaller, but. So at this point, we're gonna put on a, our scale pattern. Um, now, I'm using a material that kind of stretches in one dimension, doesn't in the other. Um, where it stretches, you kind of want that going long ways down the body. Um, that way we can shape our scales. Um, and I get it all clamped up and ready to go. And this is gonna be the top. And so now we're going to go to a pearlized green, pearl green. And uh, um, again, we're going to reduce that because I want it to be more translucent, uh, a one-to-one -one, uh, mix again. And we're just going to spray the back. Now I'm going to cover all of the gold in this uh, and kind of bleed down the sides a little bit. I want it to be kind of feather out on the sides. Um, the gold will actually come back when we uh, pull off the scale pattern. 
you'll actually see the gold to that. So that's where that's why we put the gold on. It's the base coat. So now I'm gonna use an opaque black. Um, again, I don't want this super dark. Uh, and opaque black with Createx is very dark, so I reduced it. I didn't show it on this one. But uh, that was probably a one to two. Uh, one drop of black to two do drops of reducer. Like I said, the black is very dark, so I have to have it um, thinned out quite a bit. We're also gonna do multiple layers of this because I didn't quite I want the top to kind of feather out with the black, um, kind of a darkening agent. Uh, so I'll, I'll dry it in between and then kind of slowly get it to that uh, blackness on the very back that I want. So here it is with the scales taken off. You can see the black, uh, the gold shows through the black and you got kind of the green faded on the sides. Some close up of it. And like I said, that blue is real translucent, uh, just a little bit to accent the, the back and the front. Um, just kind of like you would see on the shad. I actually got a little bit darker than I wanted to. Again, I'm having, having to get used to this new uh, airbrush. So what we're gonna do now is put the um, typical shad dot on it and uh, that kind of goes back behind the gills somewhere um, and I take the tip off or the the spreader off the tip again because uh, I want a real tight uh, nice circle um, the big thing to do on this is not to open up your your uh, air too much because you'll get a big splatter <laughs> it's not good so now we're switching to the gills uh, I'm using an opaque red for the gills um, I make my own stencils uh, so I just kind of have this stencil sitting around so I've also taken off the, the spreader on the airbrush on this one because um, you want a real tight uh, spray on this. So now we're going to, now we got the gills on, we're actually going to epoxy coat this. I use a two-part epoxy. It's a 30-minute epoxy. Um, and then I put it on a rotator. You can see my rotator. It's, uh, yes, made out of Kinex. Uh, I had Kinex from when I was younger, and uh, I was like, hey, I can make a rotator out of it. So here's the final product with the hooks on. Um, I gave it a square bill. Uh, it's just something new I'm, I was trying out. So I have some video of me fishing with this. Uh, again, I'm using my crankbait, and I've got some. I, I did catch some fish on it. Uh, it was kind of a slow day with uh, anything moving. Um, it was more of definitely more of a finesse day. Uh, but this work lure was about the only crankbait that I had that was working really good. Definitely working just fine. Oh, I got one. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. I'm pretty sure I fell hooked him. Crankbait. Oh, it came off. Sorry for the shaky video. I forgot that when you switch it to 2K, it kicks it off of Rocksteady on my camera and it's a little shaky. Got one. All right, on the crankbait. Not a big one, but it's a fish. 
And that's the last fish I caught on that lure for that day uh, because I broke the bill on the next cast on a stick sticking out of the bank. Um, I use 132nd polycarbonate. It's too thin for a three inch lure. It works fine for like a one and a half inch lure, but uh, it's just a little too big or too thin for the, the, this size of lure. Um, I'll go back and replace it with a little bit thicker. Uh, I was just kind of experimenting with this to see if it would hold up and it does not. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helps out with your painting. Uh, let me know if you like it. Thanks.